Heavenly Father, God, we thank you and praise you right now for just meeting us here, God. We thank you for waking us up, Father, in our right minds to give you more glory and more honor, God. We thank you, Father, for this is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in God. We thank you for the trials that have come on today, God. We thank you for the joy, Father, the happiness, God. We just thank you, Father, because, Father, you are the captain of our ship, God. We just thank you and praise you for tonight's service, Father. God, we thank you for your word that's going to come forth, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for everybody here that has come out, God, to fellowship with one another and to lift you up and to praise you and magnify you, God. God, we thank you and praise you right now. Bless all the ones that are on their way. Bless all the ones that have a mind and desire to come out but cannot, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, we praise you, we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 How many of you know that he reigns? Amen. How many of you know he reigns? Amen. 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 You got to say it like you know it. Amen. Come on and put your hands together. Hallelujah.
saying amen. All right, y'all may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. In the beginning of your Bibles, turn to 1 Thessalonians 4 and 11. First Thessalonians 4, verse 11. Amen. The topic for tonight is living to be quiet. Now I know some of y'all like living to be quiet. I'm a loud person by nature. I like to make noise. What's going on? Living to be quiet. But it's not what you think it is. The idea of living, quiet, living a quiet life offends some people. They don't like it. They say things like, I want to yell. I want to be a heroine. I want to save the world. I want to make a difference. I don't want to live a quiet life. No one notices. The fact there are a lot of eyes in those statements points out the selfishness of that attitude. God's way is best. It's all a matter of convincing ourselves of it. Amen? Amen? The Bible clearly says that we should live quietly in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 11. So we know that we need to study the quiet life, knowing that after we study it, we must live, we must then live a quiet life. If someone has 1 Thessalonians 4 and 11, could you please read it? Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business and to work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. Amen, amen, amen. All right, says that you study to be quiet. All right, now what are we studying? We're studying to be quiet. We're studying to do our own business and to work with our own hands. As we have commanded you, turned by Paul. Paul is the one that is that is uh, giving them instructions. All right, and that we study. All right, we are to study the word. The word study does not mean sit and try to cram knowledge into our brains for the future as a third grader studying for a multiplication test. We're not sitting here and say, okay, honey, uh, okay, we've made your life. We've made your life a journey. I will bless the Lord at all times. You won't really gain anything by doing it like that. When you say study, instead, instead it requires much ambitious work, more like the way most people approach study to get a driver's license. Now, when you study to get a driver's license, do you only just read the manual? No. What do you do? Drive. Watch the video. Drive. Amen. You don't go say, oh, I'm going to drive because I didn't read the manual. No. You have to live driving. You have to get on the road. Get behind the wheel, take that car out of the driveway. Because it's not driving, you just take the car out of the driveway. Get on the road, get out of your block, go down the street, learn to turn left, learn to turn right, learn to back up, amen? Learn how to avoid other cars, amen? We just don't drive in both lanes, amen? We drive in our own lane. So you have to learn studying driving. You can't just read the manual and say, I know how to drive, but you have to actually put it into work. Amen? So this is the study we're talking about. The word study in this passage requires much. It means we are to earnestly study and ambitiously labor to learn to live this way. This way, learning to live a Christian life does not come overnight. We've had but so many years learning to do what the world does. Amen? How many remember the age or the, the, I guess the age when you gave your life to the Lord? I mean, really gave your life and started living for it. Amen? Mine, I gave my life to the Lord when I was, uh, was it 20? Either 20 or 21. And somebody asked me, oh my gosh, you're saying you're 21? Why don't you just wait till after you turn 21? I said, because I did a whole bunch of stuff before I was turning 21. So what's the sense? Amen. But I had 20 years of doing, the, doing what the world does, learning the world's way. 20 years. So after I've gotten saved, I'm not going to learn to live a Christian life, a full Christian life, after 
after I say yes because I still have some worldly stuff I need to get out of me. So I have to practice living this life. I can't just say, oh, I'm saved, I'm loving the Lord, I'm a Christian, and woo, and God's the head of my life if I'm not practicing God being at the head of my life. If I'm not practicing being righteous in His sight. If I'm not practicing faith, if I'm not practicing, amen, how to be humble. If I'm not practicing these things, I cannot say that I am a Christian. Oh, many people do say it, but are they really living it? Amen? Mm. This material is not easy, nor does it just require a recitation. Remember, just don't read it. you got to be active in it. But it should become a natural part of our life, like we drink water, like we put our clothes on, like we take a shower, like we wash our hair. That's a natural part of our life. Amen? So when we live this Christian life, it's a natural part of our life because it is our nature. Amen? We trade in the old life for the new life. Amen? So this is who we are now. There will not just be, there will not be just a final test, but the everyday habits of a busy life. It helps us to examine ourselves to see where we need more practice. Amen? So amen, it's not like, okay, you done read the Bible, all right, what's your test? Okay, here's a 50-page paper, write me, do your test, and you'll see if you pass. No. When we pass is when we get stand before the judgment. Stand before his presence. And when he says, well done, thy good and faithful servant, then we have accomplished what he has required of us. But not until then. Amen. So we still encounter trials and tribulations while we are down here. Amen. Amen. Living to be quiet. Step one, to be quiet. Many people would define quiet as silent, not active. We tell our kids, be quiet. And we tell them we don't want them to talk. At all. Don't even whisper. Be quiet. But this is not what it means. Basically, a kind of sitting on the bank and watching the current of life go by. That's not what it is. Being silent, being quiet means we are more like a boulder in the current. Not swayed or moved, but strong people of God affecting the world around us. A boulder does not have to be loud or noisier than the current. No, the water can roar as it rushes by, and the calm stability of the rock changes the roaring water. If you ever notice the current, and you ever see that water rushing by, if that boulder is still, that water is doing this. That boulder isn't moving. It's not saying, ho, ho, I'm a boulder. Water go this way. Water go that <laughs> No. The boulder is doing its thing. It's sitting there still, and the water just around. It's more but the rock is not moving. It's not going anywhere. Amen? If we can have a calm and quiet temperament, even in the challenges of life, we will be able to change the world around us. And yes, it is sometimes a little difficult to have a calm, quiet temperament. Sometimes we want to be loud. Sometimes we want to, ah! Sometimes it's not always the way we want to be. Amen? Amen. The roar of the water may cause people to notice the water, but when they study the current, they can see the unmoving boulders. We should consider a noisy life a disgrace because the noise draws attention to ourselves. You ever know, ever know somebody who's always attracted to drama or just brings drama to their life? Their life is not anything unless they have drama going on. I mean, just. I mean, nothing could be going. They could, nothing could be going on, but they start up drama because they're so used to drama being in their life. Amen. That's a noisy person. They have to draw their attention to themselves. Because they might always say, either commenting, or you just like the drama, or what in the world is going on with you? The attention now is on them. It's not on Christ. It's on them, and that is what Christ does not want us to have the attention on us. But we are to reflect Him. We want the attention to be drawn to Him. Amen. We shall always point people to Christ no matter what we do in life. So the question I'm going to ask for my life, this is me personally, is, is my life drawing attention to me or Christ? And one note I find, striving for religious excitement requires that something new and different be encountered constantly. This inevitably leads the seeker into error. When we're constantly looking for something to excite us, in this body of Christ. Oh, I need somebody to move me. I need to go to the If they don't move me, then I'm not going back no more. 
If they don't move me, then I'm not going to live this life no more. Why does somebody have to move you? Why does not Christ move us? Amen? Just living for him, just knowing who he is, ought to move us. Amen? Amen. We don't need, if there is not another music play, are we still going to make a joyful noise unto the Lord? Amen? Amen. That's what the word says. It say make a joyful noise when the keyboard is playing, or when the drum is going, or where the music is going. It said make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all of you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Not saying come before his presence with singing when the music starts. But we should come into the house of the Lord. Amen. With a song on our heart. Amen. We may not be able to belt it out, but joy in our heart. Amen. 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 That song said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many get glad when it's time to come to the house of Amen. the Lord? Amen. We get glad when we go to the movies, get glad when we go to a party or something. But how about being glad when it's time to come to the house of the Lord? Knowing that there is food there, there is encouragement there, there is strength there. Jesus is here. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's like, I'm the head. Let me, let me do the thing. He's like, no, I don't want, I don't want to. I want you to do 
something. I'm going to think, well, how am I going to get the place? I don't know. No. There are many offices. So, if God has called you in the offices of, let's say, of hospitality, and you're very good at greeting people and welcoming people and checking on people, but then if you start dumping into, you know, being on a, a, a musician or drum, and God had called you a drum and had laid up your heart, but I play playing the drums right now. I just want to play drums. No, 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 get the drum, I'm, drum, I'm do it. He's like, wait a minute. And there's people at the door and you can be welcome in. Well, what, what, what happens? Amen? We all have to operate in what we do. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. This means we must resist all of the modern temptations to spend too much time imagining doing someone else's life or taking care of their business. For some, this may be spending too much time reading about other lives. Now, I love mystery books. I, uh, I was engulfed in them when I was young, and I could imagine myself. I was this, you know, spy, or I was a detective, and I was like, ooh, I'm going to figure this out. You know, I started imagining myself, you know, and all of a sudden you start imagining, you're like, wait a minute, I'm not a detective. I can't do this, but you get so wrapped up in it, that's what you are. If we read the word and get wrapped up in the word, then we start becoming and knowing who we are and start being that, amen? So it's telling us we need to spend more time in the word, reading the word and being active in the word, then that way we can betray who Christ intended us to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. Others are tempted to spend too much time watching TV or on the web to learn about others' lives. These things are not necessarily bad, but we must not be allowed, we must not be allowed to interfere with us doing our own lives. Meaning there's something we're supposed to be doing, then we need to be about doing it. Amen? And not get wrapped up in the TV or on the internet. Amen? If we have if we're supposed to be doing something, let's do a TV and internet and come later. Amen? Amen. I have found out that uh, yes, I, I was a uh, slave to that. I'd be all caught up on the TV or whatever, or on the internet, or on my phone, and I'm supposed to be doing stuff. And you're like, too many times you're on the phone. And you're like, great, I'll be on my phone. Let's see. <laughs> and I do what I'm supposed to do. Amen? So if I do what I'm supposed to do first, and then if there's a little extra time, and I make sure that there's a little extra time, then yeah, I can get back on the web or check out my show. If I miss my show, I just miss my show. Amen? It has, it's not, it really has, I, I like the, the TV show Teen Wolf, but it comes on by the time we have Bible study, amen. And I'm not going to stay home and watch Teen Wolf. And I don't even try to record it. Hey, if I catch another time, I catch another time. If I have time, then I'll catch up on the other episodes. But I must be about what the Lord wants me to do. Amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. We should be like a boulder. That means not to disturb others' lives. The age of temptation to direct someone else's life is also part of this section. Often our neighbors, church, or extended family can become our focus and then we are tempted to gossip, cry, or meddle. Amen? So there are things when God leads you to someone to minister into their life and give them a word to encouragement, and then there are other times where we're just meddling. We're just all up in there. And God didn't lead us to be all up in there. We don't need to be there. If God said, uh, be quiet, go and pray, then that's what we do. We be quiet and go and pray. But if he has placed somebody out of your heart to call the Lord, he's put that person in your path, then we are to minister. Then we are to do what thus say the Lord. But just to jump into somebody and say, mm, well, let me tell you what you ought to be doing. You should not be doing that. Don't be doing this. The word, uh-uh. They didn't ask our opinion. They did not say, hey, what do you think? We just hopped in. You know, that's not what God called us to do. Amen. It's a time and season. We have to wait on our time and our season. When he leads us, then we move. If he don't lead us, then we don't move. That means we jump ahead and we get all up in God's business. And we're not God. And we can mess things up, so we have to wait. We have to learn, you know what, is this not? No, you know what, God didn't lead me to say anything to them. God did not usher me. God did not put them in my path to say anything. God did not say anything to me, so you know what, I'm going to go pray. I ain't gonna tell somebody, hey, girl, you know what so and so was doing? Oh my goodness, I could not believe it. No! I have to pray, because I don't know what that person went through. I don't know what they're going through. So I have to pray, say, Lord, help them. Meet whatever need that they're missing, God, and they fill them. Amen. Whatever gap is in their life, fill them. Amen. And this is an ongoing process. 
That's all I want. We don't become super saint overnight. It's every day that we live this, actively live in the world, that we begin and we achieve this. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hey, man, God is good. How I many you know God is still good? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So the question for my life is, am I doing my business as God, as God gives it to me? When I examine that part of scripture, then I ask myself, am I doing my business as God gives it to me? All right, step three. Hallelujah. This section reminds us to work with our own hands. This section reminds us that although we are to be quiet, we are not to be idle or lazy. We should actually do something, not just talk about it. Talk is cheap and gives us nothing to show. Instead, we should actually work and have something to show. Amen. I have recently, some of you know, some of you don't know, but I have recently acquired the talent of playing the piano. And it's funny, because I put on blast. <laughs> we was in a workshop, and it was, at the end of the workshop, it was called Show Me That. And it said, the musicians will show you if you need to learn some chords, drummers if you need to know what run or need to do what to do and what not to do. So I leaned over the pastor and I said, hey, when they're going to show me how to play the show me how to play the piano. Well, as the guy goes in to finish up, he says, you know, in churches, if you don't have a musician, he said, I can tell you what. He said, pastor's wives, first ladies, learn to play the keyboard. I was like, wow. So I ain't saying that. But of course, my lovely husband raised his hand. He said, you know what? That's just so awesome how God moves. Amen. Because you guys were just talking about that. And my wife leans over to me and says, I'm going to ask him to show me how to play the piano. And he said, amen, amen, amen. First I said, yes, we can show you how to play the piano and show me that after this. I was like, wow, really? And at first I was saying it kind of like, you know, kind of joking, you know, not really meaning that he's going to show me. I wasn't really going to ask him to show me to play the piano. But went up there, learned to play three songs in six minutes. I said, Oh, thank you, Lord. And he thought he said, First ladies, wives, learn to play the keyboard. Just in case there are no musicians in your church, you have music. You learn to play, you can play songs. And I, and I have been practicing. Amen. Learn to play these three songs, learn to get good at it. So, you know, God put me on blast. I just say God did it. God put me on blast. Amen. Because you know what? He was telling us we just don't want any musicians up in our churches. Amen. That don't believe the Lord, that don't love the Lord, that aren't trying to live for the Lord, or even trying to get close to the Lord. Amen. So, he said, learn to play the keyboard. I said, wow, that is true. I can learn to play the keyboard. It's not like I'm a stranger to the piano, because I did take piano lessons when I was younger. I just never stayed with it. I'm like, you know how you ever done something never stuck with it? He's like, ah, I don't want to do that. It wasn't very interesting to me. But now realizing that there is a need. Amen. So, I, in a few weeks, the Lord said the same. And the praise team was good. We will do some songs on the keyboard. Amen. So, you know what? Amen. <laughs> In this, if you found yourself in a 
place where maybe I'm drawing too much attention to myself. Maybe I'm not doing what I should be doing. Maybe I'm just reading the word and not applying it to my life. Then tonight is the night that we rededicate ourselves to God so that we can get back on track. So that we can be actively doing His work. Not just talk about it, but be about it. So that somebody on our job, somebody at our school, somebody in our community is changed. Just by watching us. We may not have to say a word to them, but they see us. They're watching us. And then they say, you know what? That's the kind of life that I would like to have. That even though I see this person going through, they're still moving. They're still being active. They haven't given up. They haven't swallowed up and, 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 and backed up and crawled underneath the rock. But they're bold. They're strong, but quiet. Not in everybody's business. Not gossiping. Not meddling. But doing what thus said the Lord. When God gives an unction, they speak. If God don't give unction, then they don't say anything. So if you find yourself in that tonight, I want you to lift your hands. And I'm lifting my hands. So I have my myself. Hallelujah. And tonight we're going to pray. We're going to rededicate our lives. Ask the Lord to transform us. Make us a living. Heavenly Father God, we stand before you right now tonight. With our hands up raised and our hearts open, Father, for a rededication, God. We are rededicating our life back to you, God. We are clay, a lump of clay on your table. We are genuinely asking you, Lord, to mold us and make us to what you want us to be. And we want to be what you want us to be. Actively be in it, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Father, as we read the word, let us not just read and study and just say we've done something. But God, let us put the word into action in our lives, God. Let us be faithful, God, unto you, God, unto what you call us, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We want to be bold and strong, God. So the only way we can be strong, God, is in you. Hallelujah. You are our strength, God. And so we thank you right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Transform our minds tonight, God, so that we think differently about ourselves and why we are here, God. But we have a positive outlook, God, in the name of Jesus. We see things spiritually, not naturally anymore, in the name of Jesus. That we're more positive, God, and not pessimistic, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Help our hearts to be more compassionate, God. Father, we will run this race with patience. We will remain humble in your sight, God, in the name of Jesus, God. For you will exalt us in due time, in the name of Jesus, God. We cast out all drama in our lives, God. We don't want that teaching to be on ourselves, God, but we want it to be on you, focused on you. We want you for our lives. We want people to see you and not us in the name of Jesus, God. So as we have sent the Holy Spirit we press in the name of Jesus, God, we know, God, that you will honor God in the name of Jesus, God. And we'll be so careful to give your name the glory and honor that it is so rich in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
doing something else when everybody else is doing a thing. I have many people that will write me and say, do you have service tonight? And I tell them yes constantly, and they still don't show up. But I'm just thanking God that you have from some that say, you know what, I just need a blessing. I just need to hear a word. I need to come out and just be a participator, be a part. Somebody may need to see you, amen? Hallelujah. Somebody may need to hear you and just to see your smile. And I thank First Lady for that word. Thank her for starting to play the keyboard again. Amen. Give us some love. Come on, clap your hands. Woo! Hallelujah. You might go off and do her and sign the record contract. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. Doing that thing. She's so happy about it. I could be in the bed sleeping and she'll be playing it with the speakers on. And she'll come in the room and say, did you hear me? Did you hear me? And I'm like, yes, I heard you. I did. I did. You know, she's doing She's getting better, too. She's getting real good. Start to put some chords together, a little fluff and music, and not playing with one or two fingers. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You got the kids in curves. They jumping on the Amen. keyboard. Yes. They, they play the same song every time they get on there, but I, I love it, though. I enjoy it. Amen. So I just thank God. Just whatever you find to do, do it with the heaven in mind. Yes, Lord. They used to sing a song that said, What you do now, do it with the heaven in mind. If you make a vow, make sure it's a heaven in mind. Make sure it's as, 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 as unto God. And make sure your heart. Is in it for God. A lot of times we get broken because we give our heart to the wrong places. And then we call on God to fix our heart, but it, it's, it's still captive us from another place. Amen? You got you to take it from that place it's captive from for God to fix it. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, with a heart man believes, but with a mouth confession is made. So God wants your heart. He wants everything that you do unto him through God. Every time I see Sarah, Sarah, you are just the most explosive testament. Come on, clap your hands. I will tell you honestly, dear heart, you, you guys may never know when I'm, when I'm down and when I'm feeling a little discouraged because some things come about, you know, it's been a race at me the last few days, but I told my wife, I said I would not complain, I dare not, right. I dare not bow down because my heart belongs to Jesus, it's amen. in the right place, amen? amen, but every time I see you, sweetheart, it just picks me up because I, I look up there and I'm like, wow. Somebody said she was not, she's not supposed to be up there. And you doing your thing because you love Jesus. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and praise God. If you don't bless nobody else, I know you bless the power, but if you don't bless nobody else, you bless me. Amen. Okay, I just want Amen. you to know that. I want you to know you're doing a big work for your pastor. Amen. Because every time I see you, and not that you're living this life for me, but when I see you, hon, it's a, it's a big work for me because it tells me you can go on a few more days. Amen. It tells me you can keep running. You keep living for the Lord, Mr. Dawson, because look, look at what God has shown me. God has put it in your face. So you keep on loving God like you do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go ahead, Come on and clap your hands with Jesus. Amen. All right, then we're going to receive an offering and dismiss. Amen. If you have something to place in the basket, you can do so at this time. Amen. If you don't, don't worry about it. Amen. Now we've done that. We'll have the basket raised. We'll bless the offering. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. All right. Hug somebody that you didn't come with. Amen.